now. It's pushing a lot of people into different assets. But um, what has it meant, do you think, in terms of the viewpoints on cryptocurrencies? So listen, you know, crypto, like any, uh, any of the other speculative assets, has benefited immensely from a perception of zero interest rates forever and central banks just jamming liquidity in like they're trying to feed a, a foie gras duck. You know, you're, you're, you're jamming the food into the, into the duck. And, um, and so we've seen a, a, a nice move in the Bitcoin price. We've seen a, a stellar move in the Ethereum price. That's based around this burgeoning new space in crypto called decentralized finance. And what you're seeing in DeFi, which is really interesting, is really reminiscent of what you're seeing in Tesla, just a speculative frenzy. There are new projects that are doing really cool things, but they're getting such a surge of liquidity so fast. Uh, it's changing at a speed I've never seen in markets. Uh, there was a new project called Sushi that was only launched five days ago, and it's over a billion and a half dollar market cap in five days. And so that worries me some, you know, uh, it's while it's early in DeFi to see speculative frenzy like that. I mean, I think about Tesla today, right? Tesla's a stock that's up 600% on the year. It's trading at over a thousand times earnings, uh, was up 13% yesterday after being up 70% because of a split. And they announced they're going to sell five, you know, billion dollars worth of stock and the market wants to trade up. You know, that's the power of this frenzy we're in right now. Uh, it's it's a rational exuberance. You can call it what you will. Uh, I'm a little worried that we're going to have a big correction in a lot of risk assets soon. Um, I don't think it's a correction that lasts for that long because the liquidity machine is not being turned off. But I think we're going to go through a series of these bubbles and it feels close to being at peak bubble right now. So I don't know how you feel. Um, but when I look around and I see all the things that are, are going into the DeFi space and I see all the things that are going into the actual, the, the regular stock market, I'm looking around going, what's going on? Is this, is this reality? Is this something that, that really should happen? I just, I just don't see it. And, um, there's a lot of people out there that uh, disagree with me. They think that you have to get on now and it's going to be fantastic forever. And it's just, I'm telling you, this is the way that I see it is just like the ICO craze in the, in the 2017s. If you get in early. It works out pretty well, but the people who stay around too long are the one holding the bags, and then those are the ones that get hurt. So, if you're in this space right now, just be careful, and that's that's all I can really tell you. There's a lot of money to be made out there. Uh, if you want to be more risky, I'm not that risky of a person. I like to just play it, uh, you know, slow and safe, and uh, just invest. But for other people out there, this might be your opportunity. That is not obviously not uh, investment advice. Just be careful. All right. So on that that trend, let's take a listen to Mike and what he's talking about here as far as just advice. This guy has been around since, I mean, the cryptocurrency space. I remember him in 2017. He's one of the reasons why I actually got into it because he was more of the traditional space. Then he got into cryptocurrency and just talked about this is going to be big. And he still has that vision, but there's a little caveat. Let's take a listen. Key word with some of these new the, these new coins. What What's your ultimate takeaway for investors on these new names, these new coins that are coming to market? You know, do your work, have fun, be careful. Uh, listen, I, I, I lived through and profited through the 2017 crypto bubble, and this feels somewhat reminiscent to it. Uh, there, It was the ICOs back then, you know, a new ICO every day, and the herd would would swim to that ICO and jam the price up and there'd be a frenzy of liquidity and price and then it would collapse and they'd move on to the next thing. And it feels a little bit like that. I, I think DeFi is going to be around longer. I think that you are building infrastructure. You know, Compound might exist in 20 years and we might trade interest rates, not a JP Morgan vote on Compound or on some, some decentralized uh, baby, but this is still, we're a sandbox right now. And it's a sandbox that's getting liquidity like it's an adult industry. And so it's, it's, it's be very careful. Um, what's interesting is the Bitcoin, the new Bitcoin buyer uh, is an institutional buyer. It's a high net worth buyer. They are coming in methodically and slowly uh, and they're not stopping. And so that's keeping the Bitcoin price up. A lot of the traditional crypto people Right, are selling their Bitcoin, uh, buying the sexier, sexier objects. And so in this move of this kind of mania, which we're seeing in decentralized finance, 
Uh, it's pushing Ethereum price up because it's built on the Ethereum network and other protocols. It's probably putting a little, he a little weight on Bitcoin, which tells you how powerful Bitcoin is. And even with that selling pressure, it's still going up based on the macro story. So yeah, and there it is. And I can just tell you that uh, I think that, again, a lot of money to be made in the DeFi space. I think DeFi is going to be here for a long time. And the reason why I think that is because the banks have screwed us over for so long and they have made a ton of money off us, it is time to take that power back. There is no reason why they should make all that the fractional reserve or for uh, finance and, and and lending out our money and just you know just raking everything in. And they were the reason essentially for the 2008 collapse. So there is no reason why they should be in that much power. So DeFi is a man magnificent play. Do I think that it is, it is a bubble right now? Yeah, I, I do. I think it's gonna go up. So uh, you just have to be careful because if you're the one late, you're the one holding the bag. It's like it's like when they talk about poker. If you don't know who the, who the sucker is in the room, you're the sucker. Last part is just a minute, and he's going to talk about the future of crypto in 10 years. And this is what you know kind of gets me excited. Uh, so I, as an investor, I like to go you know three, five, 10 years out to see where I'm going to be. Positive in 10 years, the ecosystem around cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, the whole space, blockchains is going to be multiple times bigger than it is today. And so that's a big deal. And that's why I think this will be one of the most important years in the space. It still doesn't mean that from time to time, the speculative frenzies get carried away. I love, I have owned two Teslas. I think it's one of the best auto companies in the world. I think it's gonna be around for a long, long time. And I think Elon's a genius. It doesn't warrant a $500 billion market cap trading at you know, 1,300, you know, times earnings. It just doesn't. And we will look back at this episode in Tesla in the textbooks of one that goes up with tulips and, you know, 1999, the, uh, the tech bubble. This is a Tesla bubble. Uh, is it going to pop today, tomorrow, the next day? I don't know. Uh, it's going to pop soon uh, because you're, 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 there are just too many markings of, you know, what a top looks like. And so, you know, I'm trying to stay as optimistic and bullish as I can on crypto because it's really early in the cycle, but give the warning that, you know, there are other things in the markets that have me worried. So I think he's wrong here. I, I, I don't think this is the year that everything's, you know, pops off. I think next year, this is the momentum building phase. And once we get into quarter one, quarter two of 2020, I think that's when it all takes off because all the rails have been built. All the different problems are, have been addressed. There's a lot more main nets out there. We're making inroads with these institutional investors and you and me who are retail investors know exactly what it is. And we've been educated. I think next year is the big year. So having said all that and what he talks about as far as Tesla, I will still buy Tesla and dollar cost average and later uh, because I think it's a fantastic company. And also the same thing with cryptocurrency. And I still believe it. All right. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.